Scare Shark TV out on Peace River. We've returned four weeks later to the Cliffs of Insanity. The water's about 18 inches lower. A lot of washout. We're seeing a lot of gravel. I can see a little farther into the water, so hopefully I can get in. It's pretty cold today. You can see it's overcast, but maybe we'll find something. I got Terror Shark Tom in the background riding it. Terror Shark Mom behind me laughing at whatever that is. This is what I was talking about with the washouts and looking at the gravel. It's kind of all over. As I was walking looking for beach megs, I see this. That is a heck of a mako. Here's another. I'd venture a guess that that's missing the root that is from a lemon shark. Got more. Look at this. Ooh, that's a nice bull shark. Mom's over here straining the beach. Looks like she's had a pretty good haul. A lot of light colored teeth. Y using the old one dollar strainer, like in our how to find Florida fossils video. Check out these baby alligator nests we found. They're right behind me in this cliff wall. Oh, look at the little baby. Oh. All right, time to move along in case they call out for mom. That is a very white, it looks like a lesser white shark tooth. Well, also known as an extinct mako. Look at the color on that. I spend a lot of time staring at these cliff walls because I think they can kind of tell us a little bit more about where to look and where the fossils are coming from. And I'm, up, I'm under a big oak tree right now. It's just a huge root mass. It's a cave that goes way back. <laughs> and I'm kind of looking at the shell lines and the fossil lines in the walls. If you look right there with the flashlights shining, there's a line that goes through this whole cliff. It's a pretty distinct line. You can see it follow right there. We'll go out from under the oak so you can see it because the roots are throwing the focus off a little bit. And everything below that seems to have fossil deposits in it. It has, you know, stuff left over from the ocean floor. You know, we're finding pieces of rock, there's shell casts and all sorts of things in here. And above that, I think, is after Florida was kind of formed into a landmass, and that's all just that's just just fill and sand and you know organic matter fitting up there about five feet above me. It's kind of hard to tell scale in the camera. And so when we're looking, we're looking for that shell line and we look down and then when it washes out all these rocks to the river. And in that, oftentimes you've seen me find on the beach teeth and ice age fossils. But these cliffs and these washouts, they kind of tell a story to us and help us understand what we're looking at. And they make cute house for alligators, babies. All right, so that is the oak tree I was under. I was in the cliff, just right about under there. And it's pretty hollow, way up in there. And this is that shell line I was talking about. It follows right through here, pretty distinct. And I think that is the last line of the ancient ocean floor. So no fossils, lots of fossils. I know you've seen me find shark teeth in the strainer and other things like that. Um, and when I'm just talking about ocean line right now, from that line on the cliff wall, I'll back up and show a view from that too. But here's an ocean fossil right here. Right here is a piece of fossilized, just pop that out of the clay. Stingray mouth plate. You can see the serrations are kind of a grinder. We normally don't pick all these up. We find a ton of them. We're more interested in the sharks, but they're pretty cool to appreciate. Fossilized bone right here. It's just a shard. This would be a mammal bone, because I don't know any fish that have bones like that. It's just a shard. You can see that's where the marrow would have been. And that would be Ice Age. Could be anything. I found in the same spot Ice Age horse tooth 
So we could imagine that this is an ice age or three toed ice age extinct horse bone shard. Tom's got one here. This is the baby in the same pile. Can you see it? There's another one. And right under Tom is another one. Right here is the enamel of an extinct snaggletooth shark. Now, when I find these without the root, they're really brittle, but this one looks like it's actually fossilized through pretty good. And Tom, right behind me, just found the chewing surface of a three-toed horse tooth. It's got actually a pretty cool color on it. Unfortunately, now I'm gonna go and kind of work the edge of the water here. Just right inside here, you can kind of see where the stuff runs into as it hits the water. And I try to look at that, you know, 18 inches, 24 inches in the water every time we get out. Because there's a good chance with it being as cold and kind of gloomy out that people haven't gotten there yet. So there might be some good stuff down there. But I don't think this area has been heavily hunted. Obviously we have a kayak back there. He seemed friendly, so I don't mind him close. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll find something. Eagle Eye found one in the wall. Alright, work it out of there. Ow. <laughs> you got you got bit by the tooth. First thing you get bit by the tooth in a while. That bird has nothing to say. Lemon. Here you go. <laughs> Another one exposed in the rubble. Ah, oh, through the vine. Little one. Little one. My fingers will work. Back at HQ, we had a great time today. Found a lot of small teeth. Had a good time on the river. Explored this deposit a little bit further and, and the river is starting to be a little more forgiving. The water levels are dropping and I've got high hopes for when we get into the middle of the river where everything's been washing into. But right now, it's pretty deep if, and the current's pretty strong. I wouldn't go crazy. We did see some small alligators, so that tells me that mama is around at that size. And we didn't know where she was, so hopefully... As the water level keeps going down, we can have a little safer trip out there and find you guys some big stuff. Until next time, thanks for watching. 